Hi and welcome to Gear Wednesday here on Friendly House TV. My name is Michael and I'm Daniel and in this episode we're gonna give you an overview of the brand new Pioneer XDJRR. So Daniel, the uh, XDJRR looks pretty much like a smaller version than the XDJRX or RX2, right? So we have a multicolored LCD display, uh, two USB ports. I mean, it's pretty obvious what's happening here. Can you tell us a little bit about the top section? Yeah, we have like a seven inch high resolution screen as on the XDJRX2, but it is missing the touch features. Oh, okay. So it's no touch screen. So how is this solved? I mean, like, okay, we have a browser. Yeah, we have the mod. click and click and drop okay. buttons like on the CDJ setup. Does it make it like slower in the handling? Compared yeah, definitely to... does. Okay. Definitely does. Okay, but uh, there is a great overview still. So we see like multicolor waveforms yeah. so separated and we can also do like a sound library uh, browsing yeah, and definitely. all these things. Okay, um, we have two USB ports here. Um, so we can basically uh, plug in two sound library USB yeah. sticks, right, at the yeah. same time and uh, load them on the two individual decks. Yeah, and what's actually great what, for switchovers. Yeah, and, and what's, what's that, the master rack wake up function? Yeah, you can use a USB stick on the USB 2 part and directly record the output of the master out okay. on the USB stick. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah, a cool that's feature. That's a great feature. All right, um, the XDJRR also has a integrated audio interface, as most of them, obviously, a standalone yeah. player should have a sound interface uh, in there as well. Um, we have a master XLR balanced output and yeah. an unbalanced uh, RCA output. Um, there is a con though, right? Yeah, it lacks a booth output. Okay. Which, in my opinion, is not that necessary for at home. Yeah. But home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the mixer actually looks pretty much like, uh, I won't say DJM 900 now, but I see like four color effects here. I see the color effect knobs in the same size, I guess. And we also have uh, the bead effects, as they call it. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Actually, the, the color knobs are a little smaller as on the bigger units. Oh, okay. The sound color effects are not the same as on bigger units. They have a new pitch, the new pitch effect on it. The pitch. other three are the same. We have the beat effects, three of them, the echo, the reverb and the flanger. We miss the timing knob as on the bigger units, but we have a tap tempo for the timing or an auto detect function. Okay, so it detects the tempo of the individual tracks automatically, yeah. which is not that difficult at the end of the day if we use like pre-analyzed record box sound Definitely. playlists. Definitely. All right, um, the, well, the faders feel nice. What do you say? I, yeah, I it know. feels like a sturdy unit. Yeah. Cool. Um, they have like the headphone queuing here on the uh, down left corner here. Um, what do you think about it? Like we have queuing here. Yeah, actually, I don't know why Pioneer has, hasn't placed it above the channels, because that's how they actually do it. Huh. But yeah. It's like common sense that you yeah. actually queue yeah. here. Well, they still light in the in the in the color, in the same color yeah. as in, we in, the, in the known in so, the known Pioneer color. Fair enough. They thought about that. So um, the deck layout uh, looks. Uh, Pretty simple, which is a positive thing, I would say. Yeah. I mean, that's usually the uh, big advantage of Pioneer systems. Um, the truck wheels, um, honestly, not so sure to which controller, which of their unit they belong the most to, like the RX2 or the DDJ400. They seem like they're the same size. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, to me, they seem like the same size as the RX2, but they missed the LED light. Okay, so we, we still have the overview on the high resolution display. That's what I wanted yeah, to ask. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is a huge, like, seven inch display. That, Definitely. Should, that should be enough. And it's, yeah. a, it's a huge advantage to the chest controller units of Pioneer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, what I also see mm, lately, they actually made these orange loop in, loop out buttons, as we know them from the CDJ2000 or like previous models as well, yeah. if you think back many years ago. Um, do we still, still have the same functions as on the big players? We still have the same functions as on the old ones, but not as on the new ones. As on the new ones, we have a loop mode and a slip mode button as well okay, to, the, yeah. to the loop buttons. So we are, we are missing that here. Now we the... are not really missing that. We have it like down here where the hotkey buttons are. Okay. Like you can play short loops, you can play long loops. As you're on play, 
the loop will uh, the track will still continue to its original position oh, that's even nice. if you loop it okay. like you can see here so i see i see like a kind of short loop like is is it like possible to actually like extend the loop range no it's possible to cut one? it down but okay. not really possible to extend it okay. not longer than like so half a bar we don't have exactly the same freedom as on the no. big players no, but we limited. actually have like the possibility to use slip at yeah. all which is a nice thing yeah well cool i mean the pitch faders how, what's your opinion about these things on these controllers generally like i think they're kind of short yeah generally most of the time i would say people playing on these units will play in sync mode yeah makes sense yeah it me. definitely makes sense but it's good that you have it yeah so that's the xdjrr um pretty nice professional looking and feeling uh standalone player with the seven inch multi-color display and uh, two usb ports um the two usb ports remind us of or kind of give us the feeling that we could use it in a professional environment, but still we wouldn't or we won't recommend it to use it in a professional environment. First of all, because of the lack of the booth output on the audio interface. So apart from that, um, it's pretty sturdy, it's nice, um, pretty fancy option for bedroom DJs. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And see you next time.